Hello everybody and welcome to uh, the playground walkthrough. So this is a playground or a tutorial on coding game that I built some time back about a year ago. And actually, go ahead and drop a like if you like it. You know, oh, actually I can like it myself. Oh wait, no, that's because I'm a ray dose. Okay, I liked my own thing. Sorry. Um, anyways, yeah, drop a like if you like it. But um, this is basically the 13 subject topics that everyone needs to learn or be comfortable with to have a basic understanding of Python programming. And this is beginner Python concepts and how to get here. Uh, well, actually, real quick, this is my A Ride dose. So, this is my second profile. I'll get a picture up. Um, and I will go through basically the basics and up as much as I can feel confident with or feel comfortable like recording. I don't know. If it starts to seem like I'm, you know, like. I, I want you to at least get the basics, and that's why I wanted to go back to the actual playground, because I have been doing some code wars. I've got eight challenges done. Uh, let's see, like, uh, what was this? Kata. So these are the ones I've done, my stats. There we go. So I've rank done, and then, oh, I've only done four. Never mind. So I've done four challenges, two 30-minute videos. Anyways, so but these are the things that I was kind of talking about. I was kind of going all fast. So we have the intro, you know. Here's beginner Python concepts. Oh, and to find it, sorry, let's go back to community, learn, then go to popular. And I used to be that I have two of my playgrounds in the top five. Now I'm, I've slipped to eight. That's okay. So maybe if it gets more views, maybe more likes, genuine views and likes, not just myself. Um, anyways, so then here we go. So we're here. You know, what are computers? How do they think? Then my YouTubes. <coughs> And I'll update this to have new ones. And then these videos, they were okay. They're kind of glitchy because my internet connection wasn't the best. Um, that's my live uh, Twitch streaming. But that was fun because, um, as you can see here, Code and Game. Well, here, let's open that up in a new window or new tab. Sorry. Um, it has two people streaming right now. So at this time, I got 20 spectators, 15. That's pretty good. So mine was usually like anywhere between like 4 and 20. So. Uh, anyways, and then there's all this extra stuff, and then how you can even create your own. Uh, I have the second part of the video. The first part of the video is like the very first video I think I did. So, yeah. In fact, let's go ahead and see what it is. Get more views on this one. Yes, this is the one. This is my Ari video with coding game. Yeah, mark this time. Um, anyways, and then it starts like. It, YouTube did this. It segmented this out because I think this is, yeah, 1.4 thousand views. This is what my common one. Anyways, it gets to be about right here, I think, like 50 minutes. Then I start actually like, looking at code. But, anyways, um, that's how to make, whoops, that's how to make um, playgrounds for Python. So that's how I made this. Anyways, let's get into the next part. So, Hello World. This is usually the first program people make. So, and this is how to use the playground tutorial. So I go run, <coughs> and it says hello world. Now just to see how you, where you change it, be like, goodbye world. No, no, goodbye sun. Let's do it that way. So it's a little less depressing sound. Good, goodbye sun. So it's like the nighttime. And now you can see it says goodbye sun, or hey there, watch that. There you go. You could literally say anything. Um, hey there, watch that. Boom. And as long as it, and if it goes red, don't worry about that so much. Be more concerned about what the output is. So that's the print function. Now I gave a few examples of how to print different things. And then here's the actual, so you can read about them here. Slicing, like taking a string, which is a series of characters, saving it to a variable, printing the variable, and all this stuff. So let's see, boom. And it's going to run all of this stuff. And then every line corresponds, see there's a lot of lines corresponds with things. So you can either do it here or you can do it up here. So I kind of put them in the middle. So if you want to do like print hello three times, let's copy this and paste it into here. And you can paste the whole thing. Like, boom. And it should print hello three times. Hello, hello, hello. And it prints everything that's in the parenthesis or the double quotes, sorry. And you can do double quotes or single quotes. In fact, this is what I say. It's like, this is the classic hello word program and it prints everything that you have between the single or double quotes. 
Now in Python, we really just ask that you use one or the other and stick with it. So uh, as long as you do that, then it's fine. Cause in fact, here, we can even show you, like in live time. And this is all browser-based. This isn't on your computer. It doesn't matter what, I mean, there's a common thing about while we're doing that. There's a common joke in the computer science w community, like, oh, it worked on my computer. Well, this doesn't care about what's on your computer. It runs on a Python interpreter on a d in a container in the in the cloud it's it's not even on my computer and I even have the code for it on my github which I probably should have had but whatever um, so there you can see prints hello three times oh all right well let's um let's do this okay so and this is how you store a variable so let's go in here let's go ahead and enter a couple of times and let's go back up here when you need to declare the variable before you use it in fact let's go and just show you what print um, wait print test uh, string let's just see what that does there you go it's prints the test string that you saved that variable to so that that's the variable name test string and so I'm saying hey print that print test string and it says hello world but now our new string so and now you can get into the slicing and stuff so we can actually so you just want to look at this. This is where commenting comes in handy. So then we can print that there. And for the first bit, it's okay. It's a little crowded, but you know, okay, whoa. So now we've got to print that and it's wow. It's like every second letter. But if we wanted to comment one out, we would just do a pound sign or hashtag. And then now and if you wanted to add a space in there, you could also just do a print. I mean, that's the lazy way to do it. And that's just <coughs> what you can also do is a slash n, I believe. Oops. Slash n. We'll comment this out, and we'll see if it's, it looks the same. Ah, slash n. So print test string plus <laughs> oops yeah will be that there we go so the problem there was I had the slash n it would have worked better let's see let's even comment this out and see this is how you learn this is how you you know experiment play with it but it would have been better if we did this um Oh, actually, yeah, we could just show the example here. So slash, backslash n, so that's an escape character, meaning whatever is following this, pay attention to and do something different with. And there we go. So now we have hello on a new line every time. So you're still multiplying whatever this is by 3. And it, remember, we can also change this back to, you can even do, oh, uh, uh, no. I was going to say, you can't do that. Oh, in fact, let's try it. You cannot mix and match. And that's how... Uh, and there's a good reason for that. So if you wanted to have something within something, you would have single or double, and you could alternate. But see, now we got it. We fixed the bug. Now it's back to that. So let's see. Any of these other things, like uh, reverse the string. There we go. So you can even pull the. And again, down you have all of it down here, and it prints. And so you can even like comment here. Just be like, you know, I don't want to see that. See that. That. Oops. And if you want to comment out an entire section, let's see. What is it in Python? Well, let's look at the comments section. Sorry, that's actually, so it's the very next section. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. That just means source code modified. It'll go back. There you go. Multi-line comma is the triple. Um, the triple dashes, the triple double <laughs> quotes, or the triple single quotes. So here, yeah, exactly. So instead of all of this, let's try dot dot dot, and then dot dot dot. See, so that everything in here now doesn't. In fact, if we did dot dot dot, 
Actually, no. Let's do the triple quotes just to see. You know, it doesn't take but a few seconds so we can reset the code if we want. In fact, let's see that. Boom. No, not just yet because we want to run it and see what it prints. Just hello, 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 which is that three times. It doesn't print anything else. Now, if we did, let's revert it. Yes. <laughs> this is what it prints standard and then if you take out all of these so you know if you have a whole section you don't want like this would have been better you know uncomment 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 and then they're not spaced properly so actually let's see with that that might cause an issue here yeah so this one unexpected indent that actually causes an error now let's see it okay see I only changed that one thing one backspace so anyways that's comments so that's really useful if you want to only try a few different things and you'll notice like there's all sorts of weird stuff going on here um, read the read the text the description of it um, if you go back into the hello world like just printing things out like you can reverse the string by doing negative one so it's a uh, it's start step it's start stop and steps your lower limit your upper limit and then what to go by so this is print every other letter so go by every two this is reverse the string, so go by negative one, which means go by backwards one. You could do go backwards every other two by going negative two. Like the possibilities are almost endless, as you know, whatever you want to do with it. So, anyways, so we've got that comments now. Primitive variables now. Python's really easy. These are all the different types of variables. You can go ahead and read those at your leisure. Just know that if you print this, this is actually printing the type of the variable. Um, so it doesn't even have like a, ch a character, I think, because usually that's how you denote it in other languages is the single ticks and like a letter. But it says it's a string, so it's a whole uh, group of letters. And then a string is an actual group of letters, like hello world. And then int is an integer. Float bool is a boolean, which is either true or false. So it's a binary val value, which can also be represented with one or zero. So yeah, that's a. <laughs> variables in a nutshell now let's go to functions now functions are pieces of code if you want to keep doing the same thing over and over so here we can print all of these every time you see this like multiply that's the multiply function see it's like got that highlighted and you do that by doing def so defining a function then you name it so the multiply function and then you have parentheses with the parameters so you're sending it a and b which are variables like we learned how to declare then you do the colon and then here you return whatever you want to return so these are very simple functions I did a uh, multiply divide um, integer divide so then it gives you like only a whole number not like a partial then add subtract and modulo that gives you the remainder and not the divide so then if you print all of these you can see the corresponding let's see with uh, multiply with 2 and 5 that's 10 divide with 10 and 3 that's 3 with 3 repeating so that's the the one with the partial. This one's the integer, so that's the integer divide, so it only gives you an integer. And this one, 42, what is it? Add 2 and 40. And this one, 3, subtract 5 and 2. And this one, modulo 10 and 3. So you can get a remainder of 1, and that's what modulo is. So that's just what you can divide 10 by 3, which we've proven before. Oops. All right, so that's actually, I don't know why I was doing that alarm. We're only about like 13, 14 minutes. We're already at five, so let's just keep going. So control flow. Now this is the if else, and I've been talking about this in like some of my, uh, my Minecraft musings. Where uh, if you want to check those out, if you want to mix learning with uh, Minecraft videos, just be aware there is some adult concepts in there. But anyways, um, as far as here, the if else, if else. This is yeah a grading program where you can do all these different test cases, and so this is basically you get an input of a score and you're defining this function and then so you get the score and then you're doing if the score is this you know return a and this is actually a more scalable approach to this problem and this is like I, I've heard this used in just about every a lot of different classes now but um uh, anyways and this one is just the cleanest way to do it and it's like you could do if score is less than or equal to a hundred and greater than or equal to ninety return a and then elif which is else if um, score is less than or equal to 80 so you don't actually need this because 
anything greater than 90, which is the first test case we do, is like 100,000 or whatever that is, 1 million. If you got a million on it, which should be a typo, and you should have like code to handle that, be like, hey, that's not within the valid range, but I mean, that's like, you know, extra code to handle if you have the computing capacity. But for this, these purposes, assuming that they entered it correctly, um, this would be, in fact, even, watch, if we do that, it'd be like, let's see, just to add that thing, if score greater than 101 or, is that, can we do, wait, 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 or score less than zero, uh, return null. And then we do an elif because we have to change this to else if now that it's the second condition. I think that's right. We might have to change this part to something, but let's let's run it again. Yeah, so that or. Let's just literally just say the the word or. Okay, there we go. So null 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 oh <coughs> see now why does it say that if score so it's like score isn't changing and if I'm printing it with 95 90 so something's not right there oh wait 100 there <laughs> see right there we had a bug and you could tell in real time. So no, that's good that we got that. I had a mistake. I had a typo. There we go. Null is only the first and the last one, which these are the extreme tests of a million and negative a thousand. So if you wanted, you could add this line that we just did right here. And remember, uh, Python is, oh, sorry, actually, I didn't even say this. Python is separated by spaces. So this is a tab. So if you backspace and then do a tab, whoops, or just one, two. Never mind, it's only two spaces, so one, two. As long as it's uniform, then this is must be four spaces. So then, one, two, three, four, and then if you will see, it's still usually do tabs, but as long as they're uniform, even one space I think does it. Let's see. One. Oh. I don't think you can mix and match. Yeah, there's an error there. All right. Well, anyways, just f determine whether it's two or four spaces. And then just be aware that that could cause errors. So then, you know, here we can see, there we go. But you can see the, the define line, define function name, and then the parameters is the furthest left thing here. And then here, this is actually still the same file. See how these numbers are going down? Well, the numbers over here are continuing, you know. So these lines are also at the very farthest left that you can highlight to print these values out. So that's why you need to learn or need to understand Hello World, how to print things comments how to like disable parts of your code and then uh, primitive variables like what's going on like what you're actually storing like in this you're actually sending it a variable called score which is an integer with all of these but you could even do like you know dot zero and it doesn't error it still says null because that even though it's a float now or a double but not an integer because it has a partial part or we can even do 0.5 to show you that it's no longer just like a you know a whole number it still says null it's still like okay whatever that's a variable it's a value that comes in and then it it, it checks it says if the value the variable is greater than 101 so it actually sp space that out a little bit or if the variable is less than zero like if you can get less than a, a nothing like negative points like that just sounds vindictive so anyways um and there's that so Let's see, we're about halfway through. I kind of want to get this done in like 30 minutes. So, uh, loops. So now, yes, let's just go ahead and. Learn. So, that's control flow. Loops, or if you want to do something multiple times. So, for this, I did a simple example. Let's even like have a space in there to show you. So, this is a for loop. So, for every character in this variable, which is a string of characters. So, it's saying for every character, print that character. And since this is tabbed in, this is contained within this for loop. So, let's run and it'll do it on every single line you know each character including the exclamation point so everything in there you can even do a space space hello again and it should have a space even in here 
see like an empty line and then hello so there's oh even two empty lines did I do space space yeah I did <laughs> anyways um, so even every single white space in the that's just because the print function prints it out and a new line at the end um, and that loops through every one now let's see now this one you can do an index so you can create a variable to keep track of which index or which you know point in the variable you're doing then you can have your variable and say while index is less than the length of whatever that is so let's go ahead and show you how this is and then you gotta increment otherwise that's an infinite loop so I have index plus equals one which increment increases it one and then it goes back to the loop so while that and here you can see and now we're actually doing something slick we're printing the string but at the index and so if you go back to the um, the hello world stuff you can see that if you just have a number in there then that's the number of this so like at index 0 is h because it's 0 base and then at index 1 and that's just something in computer science I should have mentioned but like it's 0 based um, anyways you can see that it prints out the very first nothing before there's no blank space for that index 0 and then at this point in fact we can even see like um, print um, string index so that'll print a string version of index every line wait now it should have been let's see Oops. Huh. print index unless it can print it sometimes it can sometimes it can't see I don't know Um. Hmm. String index. Huh. All right, so I don't know why that's not working. I mean, it should be is strange it's like it's not taking in the changes at all because even if I just did like I don't know print changed we should be able to see see yeah it's not changing it's not taking in the changes because <laughs> then oh oh is it the length of could be an infinite loop actually now that I think about that but while index is less than length of test string yeah test string is that long so then it, it quits anyways yeah if it was an infinite loop it probably would hang but anyways that's unfortunate sometimes that bug will happen but let's see you can do multiplication and division as loops of addition and subtraction oh well, yeah that's getting into it so definitely take a look at that I mean these are just like different ways to show you well let's do it so if we run this, so you're, let's see, multiplying for how many want, times you want to multiply, you do that, like 2 mult is 5, multiple answer, so wait, so you're doing 5 times 10, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I don't even have to like read what's going on, and then dividing, so if you div answer 50, or 2 div is 50, and then you div count. So how many times you're doing it? So you're at zero. And while div answer is less than or equal to two div. Wow, interesting. That's kind of a weird way. Oh, and then you're counting the div count. There you go. So you're saying how many of the things of the div times <laughs> five. So how many times is five divided by fifty? And that's ten because you start at zero so the first time you hit one okay and you have to do it through ten times and then once the div answer which is being enlarged or sorry enlarged um, it's being increased by this much div times so that's what you're looking for and so you're adding it every time so you could just say like um, well I don't even know the the factor or something anyways we're getting into like let's see Recursion is kind of like an extra thing. It's basically loops, but just through like having a base case. Um, 
but yeah, we're getting through 25. Let's see, let's kind of skip over recursion examples of loops. That's like more examples. Data structures, now that's, that's pretty important. So lists in Python are huge, and what they are are arrays of variables. And so this is a list of, you can have integers, whereas you just have the number. You can have characters, which are actually considered strings. Um, in the quotation marks, either single or double quotes. And you can even have a, a mix match. You can have numbers with strings, and then here's examples of such. So, um, append one, two, three. Let's append C and see that go in there. See? Now C is in there. See, first item at index 0, that's 1C3, even though we've appended. We've got example list, which is, oh, sorry, we create example list, and then we append 1, so then we print what's in there, and that's that 1, and then we have append C, and then we have append 3, and then we print all of them again, formatted like this, so you see all these print lines, like lines 9, 10, 11 is print this, print this, and print this. So then you have print this, print this, print this. So at index 0, 1, 2 in the list. So this list would be 0, 1, 2, would be 1, 2, 3, but it's 1, C, 3. So, and then, let's see, sort, you can sort them. And so you have what you want to sort is what I did for this variable is to sort. So we've got something that's backwards, and we print, okay, just using that, sorted, which sorts the list for use but doesn't actually sort the data. So that just sorts the view. So print sorted to sort will look like it's forward. And then if you print to sort, which is the variable, it's back to normal or it's back to backwards. So we didn't actually change it. So then we have to do like assigning the sorted version of the list to the new list variable. We'll fix it. So then down here, you have print sorted list equals sorted to sort. Print sorted list. There you go, one through nine. And then you have print just to like have an extra line there. And then print using dot sort. Um actually wait, let's uh let's cut this and put this up here. There you go. Now it's actually sorted every time, see? Because we actually did dot sort on to sort. So we said print using dot sort, and then boom, one through nine. And now everything is print sorted, and then it's also sorted. But then print to sort, it's still sorted. So, anyways, a lot of times saying sorted. All right, we're getting down to like just a couple minutes. Um, and then my favorite part about all this is actually the example algorithms and debugging we've kind of been doing. And this is a bug bounty because it hasn't worked. There's no money, but I don't know. But that's like the description of it. I can't figure it out why it doesn't work here, but if you take it, it actually works elsewhere. Like if we copied it, put it down here, pasted, and then we pasted right there because these are all the test cases for this. And we, uh, wait, um, there we go. Commented all that. If you do control slash, sorry, that's what I did with that. So now we only have that and it should print out a couple test cases. Let's run it. There it is, see? There's the two test cases. So it works <laughs> as expected because this is the encrypted. And see, so this is rot 13. This is a rotation of 13. So what's going on here is you're defining a function called rot 13 with plain text. That's your input. And then we have what's called as a dictionary, which is a, a list of tuples, basically. They're key value pairs. And that's why I like using this example, because this goes through all the data structure, or all the variables in data structure, anyways, that you need to know for basics in Code Wars and Coding Game. So, anyways, so you have this, a corresponding numerical value, and then you get the numeric, the corresponding letter, and you encrypt it by saying, hello world. And then that gets it into ur 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 So, and then you put Jupiter, and then you put that back in and it goes hello world. <coughs> Alright, well go ahead and go check out a few of those. We might go back into some more of this, but that's 30 minutes and I wanted to just make like a nice quick 30 minute video on explaining most of this stuff. So check this out. Link will be in the description. 
and good luck, and then go check out my Code Wars and Coding Game episodes for completing them. Thanks, and enjoy.